On this short video, I want to offer you an interesting riddle from the Ibn Ezra. But first, let me explain how I came across this and what does it have to do with this weekly reading, Tazria. Actually, it does not have anything to do with the Pasha Tazria directly, but I was looking at a um, website, a Pasha blog, which is a very good website, which discusses a lot about the weekly reading. And he quoted a, a Sefer, a book called Vayakhel Moshe, by somebody named Rav Moshe Gordon. This book was published around um, less, than, less than 100 years ago, some uh, 70 years ago. Um, and uh, in this book, he brings a certain interpretation of Ibn Ezra which I found very interesting, except that I couldn't find this particular quote from Ibn Ezra anywhere. Uh, it's definitely not on, in his commentary on this week's Parsha, but maybe it's somewhere else. Ibn Ezra wrote a lot of writings. So the quote that he brings is, when it says, Keves ben Shnato, a sheep of one year old. Says Ibn Ezra, according to him, it's like Lavan ben Nahor. That's a riddle. What does it have to do the uh, sheep that a woman who gave birth would bring? What does it have to do with Lavan? So according to him, the interpretation is that in this particular case, that word, the word in the Torah, by its letters, hints to the first letters of the next words as well. For instance, Keves ben Shnato, the first letters of these three words is the same as Keves. Keves ben Shnato is Keves. And the same thing, Lavan ben Nahor, Lavan. Lavan ben Nahor is hinting to the next words as well. That's his interpretation of Ibn Ezra, but like I said, I didn't find this particular Ibn Ezra, so I don't know if there are other interpretations of this statement. But as an Agav, just uh, as he likes in this book, apparently, he brings something that's not really related to this parsha, but also in the name of Ibn Ezra. And I thought it would be interesting this is a, a, a riddle. I couldn't guess what this riddle means, so I don't know if you would be able to. Uh, again, this particular riddle does not require one to be knowledgeable in Torah, so a person in theory who is good at guessing riddles might be able to guess the answer. I wasn't able to, but not that I, that I invested a lot of time thinking about it, but here's what it says. I'm going to translate this uh, um, poem. Ibn Ezra wrote a lot of poems in his life, and this is a poem that's hinting to something. And the question is what, it is, what is it hinting to? Eretz bli adama, land without earth. Melachea visarea, it's uh, kings and um, officers. Holchim bli nishama, they go without a soul. Right? The kings and the officers of this land go without a soul. Um, Im Hamelech Shmama, if the king will be destroyed, I guess that should be the translation of it. Loti Hayekol Nishama. This is an expression from the Torah, right? A, a kind of paraphrase of sorts that Ibn Ezra is doing, as often in many of the, uh, the poems that he composed. For example, the famous poem that a lot of people sing on Shabbat, Tsama Nafshi. Tzama, tzama, nafshi. I think a lot of people will, uh, uh, will, re will remember once they hear it uh, sung. And uh, that is actually based on verses in Tehillim, the Psalms. Uh, 42nd Psalm in particular apparently became the kind of trampoline for this uh, song, this Shabbat song of Ibn Ezra. So in this particular case, Loti Chayel Kor Nishama, no soul will be alive. Apparently, the correct interpretation of the last two sentences uh, would be, if the king dies, no soul survives. Maybe that's what Ibn Ezra is trying to say. If I would have understood that, maybe I would have guessed what it's talking about. So what is this talking about? A land without earth, uh, its kings and officers go without a soul, and when the king dies, there, no, nobody else survives. It's uh, chess. This is talking about shachmat, chess. <laughs> there are a lot of different words for it. In fact, it's mentioned in the Gemara. Chess uh, 
uh, it's called something very different there. It's called something like Vardashir. But apparently the commentators, including Rashi, seem to understand that it's talking about chess. It's mentioned in the context of uh, rich women who have nothing to do with themselves and don't want to do any work and they're not busy with anything. Can they just spend time playing board games like chess or checkers or something like that? So there are a lot of different words for chess in different languages and in particular in Jewish sources there are all kinds of words for chess all over the place. But uh, Ibn Ezra even composed a poem hinting to chess. Of course, this game is a, a very wise game. There were even some sages who thought that this game is a, somewhat of a, of a good thing to play, to develop the brain and whatever. And in this I'm going to end. If you like this video, please press like.